Good morning, everyone. How are you all doing? Had some last minute tech stuff right there at the end. <laughs> Someone couldn't find the couldn't find the live. Good morning, fancy free. Hope you all are well. <clears throat> Just gonna wait for a second for folks to start jumping in, but only for a second. <laughs> How's this week going? Can you believe that we're in week four? (laughs) Crazy. We're on day 23, you all. That is so crazy. (laughs) We made it so far. Good morning, Tracy. Good morning, Sandra. Uh, Sorry, I couldn't be with you all yesterday, but I did go back and read y'all's comments. <laughs> so maybe I was happy that I wasn't with you live. <laughs> and uh, good morning, Sherry Lynn. And uh, good morning, Kathy. I'm going to go ahead and pray. And get started. Uh, Good morning. Uh, Let's see. Instagram. Good morning. Barbara. How are you on Instagram? I don't go over there a lot. I apologize for that. Good morning, Andrea. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you so much for your mercy and your grace. Thank you for safe travels. And now here in Richmond, I get to see my friends and do some things. Um, ask that you bless the word today and help everyone to receive it as your word and then apply it to our lives. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Good morning, Eva. Today, we are praying for our beloved to make choices that support mental health. As we seek wholeness for him, we need it for ourselves as well. What is mental health? The Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration defines it simply as our emotional, psychological, and social well-being. It affects how we think, feel, and act and helps determine how we handle stress stress, relate to others, and make choices. It all starts in the mind. So today's battle charge is making your mind like Christ. We don't need to have much experience at all in the Bible to know that Christ had more stress, more people, and more choices to handle than any of us. The Bible says that he didn't just come to die for us, He came to be an example to us how to live holy or holistically and holy, sanctified, set apart in a world that would be increasingly less so. On our worst day, we don't have the salvation of the world on our shoulders. At our biggest event, we don't have 5,000 plus needing to be fed by our hand. On our busiest day of the week, we don't have to make choices between our comfort and the destruction of the world forever. Philippians 2 tells us that Christ's mind was different. And of course, we see the evidence of that through the Gospels. Today, I want to share with you three powerful decisions you can make to make your mind like the mind of Christ. Now, to decide, the root word of that is uh, means to cut off. To to decide to do X, Y, Z is to cut off the option of doing A through W. And the the reality is most of us have not made many decisions in our lives. Why is that? Because we have multiple choice lives where if I feel like this, then I will choose A. But if I feel like this, then I will do Z. And it is 
then no wonder that our minds are constantly in distress. The cognitive dissonance of knowing one thing but doing something else weakens our minds and gives space for the enemy to enter. And how many people know that mental illness is really the enemy having entered? We're not saying someone's demon possessed. We're saying the enemy is battling your mind. I've had that situation in my own life where it felt literally like the great controversy was going on in my mind. God was saying this and the enemy was saying that. And at sometimes I was leaning toward him, it, the enemy. And sometimes I was leaning toward God and praise God, God won out. But it's the enemy. The Bible is replete with examples of the fact that the mind is the battlefield of the great controversy. And so it's important that we choose to be to have the mind of Christ. And that's not accidental. Our scripture for day, for today is Philippians 4, 4 through 8. Decision one, this decision number one, rejoice always. <laughs> be full of cheer, be calmly happy. And I was saying that we often read scripture at arm's length as when reading a history book or a fictional story. It is interesting and engaging, but not really related to me or applicable. Almost like a fairy tale, like, oh yeah, that's cool, God. But Paul says, be full of cheer always. Make a decision that you will be full of cheer. How can you do that? You cut off the option to brood or complain about our life, your situation, and you keep your focus on the Lord. When we talked about gratitude and how our gratitude is selfish oftentimes because we're not thinking about all the good that God is doing all the time. We're just thinking about our specific situation. Well, when we think about God being good and it said rejoice in the Lord, that means your focus is on him. We know that there are always reasons to rejoice. We just have to decide to do it. And Jesus kept his focus. He was able to be calmly happy through his walk. Now you may be saying, well, what about Gethsemane? He wasn't happy there. I'm glad you asked. Decision number two is be anxious about nothing, but take your petitions to your heavenly father. Cut off the option to ruminate, stew, marinate, think about, you know, belabor the possibility of things to come. Jesus was not anxious in the sense of, of how a lot of us are. We don't know what the future is. He wasn't worried or uneasy or nervous because he wasn't, he was uncertain. He was, had a real response to what he really knew was going to happen and how this was all going to, to play out. It was hard beyond what our conception can even be or words can even express. And so he brought his prayer and supplication to his father, the only one who had any power to change it. He didn't sit around worrying, letting his mind race with the ifs and the maybes. He said, Father, if we can do something else, let's do that. But if not, your will be done. And when he received his answer, he calmly faced the rest of the situation. When we turn our questions, concerns, and future over to the Lord, verse 7 in Philippians 4 says that God's peace will keep our mind, our heart, and mind. And that word means to guard as a sentinel. It's security, to protect it. So when we cut off the option to do anything but bring our petitions to God, he puts guards around our minds to protect our mental health. And decision number three is only consume true, honest, just, pure, lovely, reputable, honorable, and praiseworthy content. Now, content is a really big word in our, in our lives today. <laughs> this is content, what we're, you're consuming right now. YouTube has millions of channels and content. Facebook and Instagram and TikTok and TV and, and all of these things. 
we're streaming constantly. There's content. <laughs> who we talk to, <laughs> who we engage our friendships with, content. We, liz- we live as if we can consume all of the evils in the world in real life and fiction and still have sound, healthy minds. Mental illness is more pervasive now than at any time in history. Is it a coincidence that we are more inundated with things that are untrue, dishonest, unjust, impure, ugly, disreputable, dishonorable, and contemptible? I don't think that's a coincidence. Paul counsels us to take inventory of all the good things, to esteem them, to make them the focus of our mind. And then you will have peace. We are seeking peace in our minds while spending our days consuming war. No wonder our minds are attacked daily. We have no sentinels at the gate protecting it. Cut off consuming things that break down the peace that protects your mind. Jesus certainly knew there was evil in the world. He worked to remove it through his love and his word, but he didn't consume it. So how do we make our mind like Christ? Decide to rejoice rather than complain. Decide to pray rather than be anxious. Decide to consume what is true, honest, just, pure, lovely, reputable, honorable, and praiseworthy, rather than what is untrue, dishonest, unjust, impure, ugly, disreputable, dishonorable, or contemptible. Cut off. That's what you're making a decision to cut off all options that leave your mind unguarded by the peace of God. It may not be easy and it's possible. God doesn't tell us to do the impossible for with God, all things that he asks us to do are possible. Let us guard our minds. Let us teach our children how to guard their minds. Let us from little to big, let us, let us teach our If we don't have children, our nieces and our nephews and those that we mentor, how to guard our minds so that we can ward off the tax of enemy because the battleground is in your mind. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, (laughs) your enemy was trying to take this message out. That means, that gives me joy actually (laughs) because Anytime the enemy attacks, that means something, your power is about to do something amazing and he ain't having it. So thank you, Lord, that the, that the internet came back and we were able to reconnect and that everyone got this message. Thank you for those who stayed on, who were waiting for it and that they will not just keep it to themselves, but share it with someone today. Bless us, Lord. Thank you for all of the women who support this ministry with their presence and their prayers. And thank you for all of our beloveds. In Jesus' name I do pray. Amen. All right, good people. You know what to say. Whatever battles you face today, (laughs) keep fighting on your knees. God bless you and have a great day. I love y'all, man.